Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Good time zone, right? Wherever you are. Could be evening. Could be uh, afternoon. Could be all kinds of times. But here in Wisconsin, the Midwest, the U.S., it is 10 a.m. So that qualifies to me as the morning. Uh, I'm Shreve Jackson, and we're on a GM prep stream, y'all, for Kids on Bikes. So um, if this is your first time here, welcome. Um, so Kids on Bikes is a uh, tabletop RPG that fo that focuses around kids finding out about super adventures in their town. Could be town politics, could be supernatural stuff, or a mix of the two, which is uh, kind of what we did here um, with our season. Um, so we have actually completed season one uh, of our show, uh, which was... 10 episodes long, um, three hours each. So we have 30 hours of goodness and a session zero as well. So, um, so, so the session zero was like where we like built the worlds, created the characters. One thing I love about the system is it's very like collaborative. So everybody contributed to like the name of the town, to the people that run the town, to the rumors in the town. And then I use that to build the adventure um, that we had over the past season. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool system. Um, you can use any of those links on the bottom there to catch up. Um, I don't know why I keep getting that like artifacting in my, uh... hold on. I think it's cause I'm moving and I have like all kind of boxes around. So like some of the boxes are like messing up the normal, lighting situation that i have uh but that's okay um i just hope that the artifacting doesn't bother too many folks um actually i could just probably move my camera a little bit this way make it a little, a little less uh a little less strange and turn my light up maybe make that a little brighter okay all right well whatever i'm i'm probably the only one that's bothered by it so so i need to show um all right yeah so so um so yeah so it's kind of like inspired by goonies and et and you know all, all those old like Sp spielberg movies um and the new ones like super eight and stranger things and such um so we had a crew um we had like marquia like mccarty as like mana pepperwood we had a uh, shoe mason as winter lee um we had uh no uh the noir enigma as uh four or uh or thaddeus j chadwick the fourth and we had kaylee bray as uh meadow you know um so what we're gonna do today is so we finished off that story arc and now we're going to talk about what we want to do for the uh, remaining two episodes because I kind of wanted to be probably a little lighthearted, right? I don't think I want to delve into some of the, uh, you know, more scary, supernatural, creepy stuff that we did during the regular season. So I'm thinking of doing where, like, there's some kind of, like, town event or there's some kind of either big town event or some kind of, like, maybe big event at someone's house like there's a big dinner or something that everybody has to attend and then like hijinks ensue um i was thinking about some big thing at the school but i feel like we spent a lot of time at the school and we built some other things here and there's some things that we really didn't get into that i think it would be cool to to like a dip into so like so like some things that we didn't cover, let me zoom in a bit here. We didn't really go into any of the mansions. I mean, we definitely had scenes where uh, Four was in the mansion because uh, he had his uh, favorite butler, Andy. And we definitely had some where uh, Shu and uh, Felix kind of like drove up to the t Bergen mansion, but nothing where they were really in there with maps and stuff. So we can either do something there at the... Uh, at like one of the mansions um 
we could do, as I said earlier, like a dinner or some kind of celebration at like any one of the characters' houses, right? Which I think would be cool. Um, we also, so remember, when we designed our world, we had both the Techberg Times, which is run by Alexa von Tebergen, and Homegrown, which is run by uh, Bitly Spellbound Chadwick in the same building. Um, kind of like in this older building where they're both kind of like sharing office space because, you know, they don't, they're not really making a ton of dough or anything. Um, so we can explore that building, you know, like, uh, because we did, we had some time travel involved <laughs> with this season. And at the end of the episode, Real new bother, man. What is going on with my green screen? I don't think it's the green screen. I don't know what it is, but fine. I might take it off. Uh, but I gotta leave it up so that my wife can go around in the background uh, without being on stream. So the struggles of uh, of uh, being on stream. Um, yeah. So yeah. So um, we did have one big change to the town when like everybody came back to the present time at the end. Um, and that was that instead of uh, our local video store, Foreman's Flicks, who, who, which was run by Eric Foreman, who we found out uh, is not a good dude. Uh, you know, we have a blockbuster in the town. So we know that there are some changes so we could explore like some other changes that might occur in like the town, you know, um, especially since we found out that both Alexa Von Tebergen and Bitly Spellbound Chadwick were actually trapped in, in, oh God, I turned on, <laughs> I turned on my uh, Amazon device again. I don't know why I gave her that name, but I apologize if I turned on your Amazon device when I just said that. But <laughs> yeah, so uh, she was just just a commenting that she doesn't know anyone with the name T Bergen. <laughs> so you know, she's she's in on the plot. Yeah, so we could do something with them, um, and we could also you did the same thing with the MP. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about kind of renaming her, but. Um, I don't know. It's, it seems like, I mean, the rest of the cast was fine with it. So, and they came up with the name, right? So like, I didn't want to change it. Um, I didn't want to change a name that they came up with, came up with. All right. Let's try to, maybe, is it the background? It can't be the background itself, but I'm going to try to change my background and see if that shouldn't make a difference, but. Oh, that's kind of creepy, actually. I don't want that one. Um, let's, do, let's use a Tomb Raider background. What about that? Yeah, cool. All right. Um, yeah, so so we got... So we have that. Uh, we, have, we haven't done anything with City Hall. So City Hall you know, obviously is where a uh, Julie and Pepperwood um, is. And we did something a little bit with the commercial buildings, but we did it back, back in the past. Right. Because like, this is actually where our characters first arrived uh, and, and like met Mr. Shelby and uh, you know, threatened to burn his place down. <laughs> um, so we kind of, so yeah, so maybe we can investigate maybe, you know, some descendants of Mr. Shelby, right? That are still kind of like running a shop, you know, um, there. So, oh, I actually like that possibility. I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, may maybe we'll involve that somehow. So like maybe, maybe for this event, people have to go like shopping, you know? So like they have to like get something from this commercial area and maybe they run into like, you know, like, oh man, I, I okay, yeah, we are. I think we're gonna have a Shelby relative in this. Um, 
for sure. So, yeah, I like that. All right. Uh, chem tea itself. So we did go through sort of the, the older factory, right? And the older factory um, had that fan. It had the chalice in it and, and, and like all that. And we did build a map for the inside of chem tea. So we do have uh, this map here. All right, for like the like kind of like parking lot section and then the inside and then like the inside storage area where we had a bunch of turnips and tentacles and good stuff like that. So so we could also involve like chem tea in this. All right. Now, I guess one hard thing that I always run into while I GMing is you have all this stuff and sometimes there's a pressure to say, I need to use it all, you know, like, otherwise it's a waste, you know? And because we're only doing like a two episode epilogue, I don't know if I want to go to too many different places. I'd rather have like a deep dive into one place and then maybe have one other place in my back pocket in case either the characters seem, well, well, in case the like players seem a little bored with that place or they make a suggestion that they want to go out and do something else. Um, also like to give the players options, like uh, we can either go to Kim T or we can go to, to city hall so that they're invested in where they go. So, so I think as a GM, it's good to prep a lot of different maps. And like, this is even if you're just doing like theater of the mind and you're not like focusing on roll 20 and actually like creating maps, but you should always have some different places to go and then give the, well, I would suggest to give the players options, right? Don't always funnel them down like a linear path where there's only one place that they can go because like, you know, that kind of takes away like some of the beauty of playing a uh, tabletop RPG. If like you're just going from A, B, C, D, it makes it feel kind of like a video game, you know? All right. So yeah, so we could go to Chem T as well. Maybe we could explore any similarities that this might have to the uh, wind factory that we found um, in a yield tech work. Um, and then I have to replace form and flicks with a blockbuster. Now, I don't know. Can I do that? Is that like a copyright thing? Let's just see what uh, come. Oops, I'm not searching the marketplace. Let's just see what comes up in the marketplace. Cause it will bring up like web searches and I'm assuming that the stuff that comes up from the web is going to be, you know, um, only the like creative common stuff that like I can use. So blockbuster video probably won't come up. So what I'll probably have to do is just have a building that's like in those same, like, like blue and yellow, like colors, you know, um, and then use that, All right? That's probably what we'll do, actually. So I know that the Blockbuster by me was like all blue and yellow. Um, so let's just do a roll. What's this Blockbuster in Bend, Oregon? What does that mean? Oh, this is like one of the final ones. Holy crap. Is this still around? Wait, wait, what what year is this article? Oh, I can't really see the year. But uh yeah, so like I so like I might not be able to have a blockbuster sign, but I can still have the colors. Okay, so the one in Australia closed in 2019. So like this one is Yeah, I can't find the year of this article, but wow. Well, let, let's actually go to this uh, Bend Blockbuster home. They got a Twitter account and everything. Wow. Oh, all right. So they... 2020. Man, this is incredible. That this Blockbuster is still open. Wow. Look, look, look at that. They, they have face masks. Blockbuster video face masks. Wow. 
That is something. All right. So there is. Yo, I can't believe I'm on a Blockbuster website where I can get soul and stuff like that. This is incredible. Um, all right. So. Yeah. So let's actually look at the images. And like, uh, again, I'm I'm not just going to take an image because that probably goes against the copyright. But I want to look for. I think I might just. I might just have just like a blue sign with like a yellow, like a yellow block on it, you know. So. I'm just going to. Do nothing. Yeah, can I? Yeah, I, I, I gotta fill it in actually. Yeah, so we got that, and then we have like that ye little yellow outline in there. Um, let's get some yellow here and. <laughs> there we go. I actually kind of like the idea that like Blockbuster um, looks almost almost looks like the like same building, right? But they kind of just like bought it out, right? And just retrofitted it and just made it into a Blockbuster. So like they didn't build a new building. Y y you know, they might have redone like the inside or like whatever and that kind of stuff. So, so yeah. So. Yeah, so they even uh, probably even kept the name like uh, Foreman Flicks, like presented by Blockbuster or something. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Blockbuster. Blockbuster Foreman. Blockbuster Foreman Flicks. You know, I, I can kind of see that because like to like get this through the uh, count the city council and all that stuff, you know, I mean, they like probably had to negotiate with them like exactly what they could include in there. So, OK, I think that works. I'm like, yo, is that Ben Blockbuster still open? man? I, now I'm like fascinated about that. I'm like, hey, maybe we should have set Techburg in Bend, Oregon. You know, and it could have been like a battle for the final blockbuster. <laughs> you know, who knows? Yeah. And we went to the turnip grounds in the past, but we did not go now. So we could also explore the turnip grounds, right? We saw in the past that the turnip grounds kind of had like an underground part. And that's actually where we, you know, solved a big mystery about where some of the people were. Um, so maybe we could go to the turnip grounds here and Amelia would be here as well. Right. But this would be the actual Amelia, uh, not the Amelia that we, uh, you know, the uh, double of Amelia that we found earlier. So, and we had a plot line earlier. Well, I had a, a plot line with this rival school, the Techburg turnips, but nothing really came up from it. You know, we had that the Techburg turnips were, well, so, so like Felix von Tebergen, like the principal of the Tebergen Academy of Science, he said that he kind of locked down this new science lab because the, because the rival school, the Techburg turnips were like stealing, you know? Um, so we had that plot line. And we also said that the Techburg turnips managed the turnip grounds um like the students there but that's all we really did so one other thing that we could maybe say as part of the epilogue is we could maybe say that these two that we maybe we don't have something at the T-Bergen Academy of Science M maybe we have maybe it's some sort of competition like between the Techburg turnips and the T-Bergen Academy of of uh, Science and that could be based either at the turnip grounds or T. Bergen Park. 
So we got a lot of different options. Oh, and we have another option is that we can be out in the forest, right? Because we built this map out. So the intention of this map was to be like sort of out in the forest where uh, Meadows uh, cult, not cult lived, right? And that this will be like an area that Meadows mom helps to lead them to. Um, and then I had that under there, there would be like a little uh, weapons room with some arrows and stuff that I was going to have them use. Um, and then, and then we also had like a bedroom area that like they could all rest in. So that's another option is that we could actually get outside of the city, you know? So yes. Yeah. So like, maybe it could be like, like some sort of vacation, right? Well, not, not a vacation, but, but like, they're all like, wow. Like we just had a lot of, you know, of, of ridiculous stuff that's going on. Let's, let's go out. Right. And like get some like fresh air. Yeah. Or maybe it's like, you know, because we establish, well, for the sake of uh, no spoilers, I'll just say that Mary is no longer a threat. So Mary at the beginning was the superintendent that turned out to be like a big threat, but we found out that she really was not a threat. Right. So because the, the so because the people that lived out in the cult, not cult, you know, they were like kind of being terrorized by uh, Mary. Um, if she's not there, maybe it's safe enough. Not that Meadow like would move back, but like they would go back to visit their uh, friends and stuff. And like, maybe she brings, you know, um, everybody else there. And then the adventure happens outside of the city. That actually would be interesting. Huh? You know what? I kind of like that. I kind of like that. So let me actually, uh, let me start writing some of this stuff down. So this is all like all the session zero stuff. So maybe we should do the. Yeah, look at that. It's like. It like pixelates like based on the way that I move. Um, bother me. All right. So for our epilogue. So we can say that the, so after returning to present, Hardy wants some time away from the city. And then, uh, Mary is no longer a threat, so. <laughs> Out the cult, not cult in the forest. All right. And then we can say that they need to stop at City Hall stores to buy supplies. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, so if we do that, that could involve the the shops here where they might, you know, meet meet a Shelby relative, right? In modern incarnation of that old tavern that we were in. Yeah, so actually I'll like bring up that map. Um, so we previously had this like old tavern here and this tavern was where like Mr. Shelby was. So maybe there's still a version of that tavern that's one of these, one of these six buildings here, right? And then like they can kind of like run into like, I mean not Mister Shelby himself, but you know like a like a relative, um, of a his. So I kind of like that idea because like that would involve like uh, this map here, so I can kind of take that tavern map and like modernize it. That that actually would be awesome. Um, 
I also do want to, um, because uh, um, our friend Butt Prince did make this awesome map that we did end up using, but I used in like a different way. So I kind of made this map into the a lounge in Yield Techburg. But what I want to do is I want to say that since Felix, since Kid Felix saw this, when he came back, he actually went and reorganized the student lounge in modern Techburg to look like the one in old Techburg. So this is where we're going to use the, uh, the uh, teacher toaster uh, and like all those mocktails that we came up with like before. So yeah, as, as a reminder, uh, we have that the fireplace is the teacher toaster. The mocktails are the long division, the bill of rights, the photosynthesis and great expectations. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So we're totally going to have it that, uh, yeah, ex exactly. I mean, the players don't know. Right. And, and that's like a good tip for GMing in general, right. Is create a lot of things, but don't be so tied to this has to happen in this specific way or this specific time. Right. Introduce things like move things around, you know, cause not only are the players like they're not the wiser. Right. So it's not like th th they'll, they'll know, but it also keeps things fun for you as a GM because it kind of keeps you on your toes and it makes sure that that like um sorry let me move my light a little bit I, th I think my light does need to be a little bit arced over just trying to got a bunch of stuff on my desk um okay um yeah so so like it like also keeps things interesting for you as like a GM right and you are also a player in this game, right? So like you want to make sure that like you are not being bored because you set out this completely kind of linear thing and that your players are just following it, you know? So, yeah. So that's what we're going to have is this is going to be how Felix actually redesigned the uh, place. So, so actually, so first thing that they want to do is they want to, Need to stop at school to get Felix. Felix has redesigned lounge to look like like Yield Techburg, which is awesome. All right. So so yeah, that's totally a Felix thing that like he would do. Right. And uh so yeah, yeah, I, I think that like that would be a nice a nice turn of events. Um, and yeah, so we got that down there. And yeah, so like we can use that there. Um, and we can also say that uh, to get Felix, um, and Coach D as well. Yeah, I kind of like this. So we can we can go to some multiple parts and we can kind of justify it as like people are like picking up like different people, right? So maybe we can say we need to stop at the homegrown tech bird. Well, actually, I don't know if I'm gonna. I want to do that because I don't really have maps for for those places, and I really want to use the maps that we already have. So we'll say that, like, um, like Alexa. Damn it, tab. Okay. <laughs> that Alexa Bitly will meet us there. 
Oh, sorry, y'all. I just activated our Amazon device again. <laughs> I will never stop doing that. I like always forget up until it happens again. You know, that's just that's just how I am. Okay. All right. So let's continue here. And hold on. Let's make sure that we are looking at the right thing here cuz I kind of had something something happen. Okay. All right. Sorry, it almost looked like that the Twitch stream went down, but I think it did not go down. Um, I think that my I have like a viewer on my software that that shows me like the number of viewers and drop frames and all that stuff. And like everything just like momentarily went to zero. And I was like, okay, that, that can't be correct. So I mean, we could, I guess, create something for them, but 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 like I really want to use the maps that we already have, right? So yeah, so so actually let's tie this stuff into the maps that we have. So we have the the tavern. Um hmm. actually, you know what? Maybe instead of modernizing that tavern, maybe maybe that this tavern is there, but it has like a particularly old look to it. Like its gimmick is that it's like a old you know, like a old uh, um, tavern. So maybe the tavern in the area actually does look almost exactly like Mr. Shelby's place. So, so like maybe we can actually use, maybe actually use like the same map. Ooh, I like that too because, like, the players can originally go in there and maybe get worried that they think that they went back in time, but it's really just like. But, like, then they see, like, you know, those, uh, you know, like, things that let them know that they're in the 90s. Like, there's a Game Boy somewhere, you know, and, like, there's, like, Ninja Turtles on the TV or something like that. Oh, I I like that. I like that. Yeah, so. So, in. Yeah, modern version of Old Timey Tavern. But then we say that, you know, the tavern style to look like it did during the Prohibition era. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I think I'm feeling this. So maybe, maybe episode, maybe the first episode is like kind of them gathering everybody to go to this thing, like outside the city. And then the second episode is them actually outside the city kind of doing stuff. So, so I, I kind of dig that. Yeah. So we have, uh, Blog episode one, and then we got epilogue episode two. So this one is like gathering, gathering the party, and then this one is the main event. Okay, I, I kind of like that as like a way to uh, break it down. And so like another GM tip here, right? I'm breaking down these episodes into gathering the party and the main event. At the same time, if my players are like, okay, we have everybody that we want. Let's go now. I'm not going to be like, well, hold on. We got to gather like more people. So even though I set this up here, it's possible that we could get to the main event within episode one. Right. I'm not going to try to artificially extend the game or to like make up things that they have to do that sound kind of tedious just because I want to push back the main event to episode two. So my goal is to have an idea of how long it may take them to gather, 
but then be flexible enough to adjust in real time if I feel like like maybe the energy in the game kind of goes down because everybody's like, oh, I got to get another person, you know? And then as a GM, you have to notice that and be willing to keep things moving. You know, it's all about maintaining that that energy and making sure that everybody is like having fun um, at all times, you know? You know, that's, you know, that's, that's like the main deal, right? So make sure that you um, have that at the top of your mind as you're uh, designing things. So, all right, all right. I kind of like, I kind of like what we got so far. I like what we got so far. Is this a tavern? The the building the kids threaten to burn down. Uh, it's not the exact tavern, but you know it, they've kept. Well, it's the same building owned by the same family. Um, and it says maybe the owner got super into fire safety. <laughs> I kind of like that. Maybe, maybe like there's like, you know, way too many fire extinguishers. Ooh, I, I like that. I like that. There's like an excessive amount of fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers and sprinklers. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, yeah, so, let's see, so, like, who else will they need to gather? So, they're getting Felix and Coach D at the school, um, of which we'll go to, like, a tech bird, and we'll also say that, uh, lab has been closed for f further notice. And all pencil sharpeners have been removed. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so the pencil sharpener was like a trigger early on in the season that the uh, th that the party used to access this um, other dimension that we found out has to do with the superintendent and whole whole big storyline that we covered like like last season. As I said earlier, I don't want to go into details in case there's anybody here that has not seen it. But um, that's why all the pencil sharpeners will be removed because they are paranoid about, about pencil sharpeners, you know? Who isn't? Who isn't? Let me keep... Uh... Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my windows to make sure that I can keep the, sh the, sh the stream chat on here as well so I can see all that. Very cool. All right. That sounds good to me. Um, yeah, so we're gathering Felix and Coach D. We're, uh, how about to like buy supplies and get J Julian as well. Julianne. So. I think I've been going back on like pronouncing her name, whether it's Julian or Julianne. Um, I think we were saying Julian because we were saying when we were making the characters, like we were saying that she wanted like a name, like a name that didn't like gender her, you know, which is how she was able to get so far in like her politics and stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, th I think Julian was what we decided on. So I'm just going back and forth with that. Um, all right. Yeah, so who else might we want to... So we got Amelia, so we can... So we can stop by the Turnip Garden to get Amelia, since like that's where she spends a lot of her time. And, the, and then the players can choose to, um, you know... Check if there is an underground um, underground area, right? Because because that's where we found out about like the stunner by physicist Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, where where we uh, broke some glass, and then we heard uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> heard Stone Cold's music start up. Uh, we did not, but that was a, a little joke that Noir shared. Um, yeah, so like I'll give them like the option. I kind of like this actually. 
So, so I'm introducing all these areas. Well, not introducing for the first time, but I am having all these areas, but I'm giving them the option to explore them. So I have stuff at the ready if they need to, because I have I actually have a turnip map that we did not use. That's kind of like uh where is it? Yeah, so I have like this map here of like the current like garden. So so that we can use like 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 this map. This is actually the one I was gonna use for Yield Techburg, but I felt like it looked a little too modern, you know, um, in terms of like the style of it. So like so like uh, so like uh, we'd we'd have that on the outside, and then we have that little hatch there on the left, and then that hatch would go to here. Right, which is sort of like a garden under a garden kind of thing. So, so yeah, so like I could give them the option to investigate that. Close, which is cool. And wait, are, are these your frame for the session? Um, not sure what you mean, but these are the maps that I use in the sessions. Yes. Um, and yeah, I just use. I just use these sessions to like talk about like my ideas um, and to just make sure that, you know, that, that like everybody's aware of some of the tips and, and the strategies that I use as well. And yes, this is live, live Potter boy. We are live. You know what I'm saying? So we do these from 10 to 12 um, on Thursday mornings. Um, and our show is on Monday mornings, right? So we use these to talk about the, the like different prep and stuff that we do for the Monday show, you know? So thanks for coming through though. If uh, this is your uh, first time, um, if you've have not seen our show on Mondays, I highly advise you to, to, to like, uh, to, to, to let, to, to like, uh, check it out. Oh yes. Yeah. So the, so this is me writing out some notes for the next few sessions, right? So we have like a two episode, like an epilogue because our season finale was uh, last week. So I'm switching between like the maps here in Roll20 and like writing out on a Google Doc, um, just some raw notes that like I may or may not do, right? And then the notes here are actually from session zero where we collaboratively built the world. So I go, I go back to this often because I like underline the like important parts that we, that we did in terms of the names. So I can make sure that I include those. Right. Um, because the worst thing that you can do, well, not the worst thing, but one of the worst things that you can do for your players is to ask them, to contribute to building a world and then not use their characters or their rumors and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that I always like kept this up through the whole season so that I can make sure that I'm incorporating in those names and those places and those rumors. Actually, you know what? Let's look at the rumors and see if there's any rumors that we did not use actually. So we had the bootleggers. So we used that rumor. We have the tunnels, which we also used. We have that the gangs never left. Mm, so we definitely use that, right? With our boy Freeze. Um, Freeze and Ammer. Uh, that the local paper are trying to write a story. We mentioned, I mean, Julian mentioned that, um, you know, in the last episode. Not really something we spent a lot of time kind of talking about, but we did mention that you know, she, she had been trying to do it and that's why her, her and Julian got, uh, got turnified. <laughs> um, let's see. Are you able to, to, to get all these notes during the session? Uh, I usually take notes during the session, but then I like, uh, spruce them up and make them nice. So they don't look this nice kind of during the session. I mean, during the session, they look a lot more like wild, 
you know, because I'm just kind of just randomly typing stuff. But I do like, I uh, go back, I do rewatch, not the whole episode, but like I rewatch parts of the episode because I like to make clips from the Twitch stream. So um, on my uh, Twitter, um, I will put like, like, um, like uh, clips and stuff. And actually I'll show you, show you an example of what I mean. Right. So if I, if I go to my account and then I look at the media. So this is an example of a clip that like I made here. Um, so I like to go back through the Twitch stream and then make these like minute long clips and then post those, you know, J just so people can like get a sense of like how our campaign is, how much fun that like we're having um, and like all that stuff. So I try to share like one or two of those a week. And like I link the, uh, the uh, cast on it and stuff. Actually salty ginger. I'm going to whisper this to you. And if you could link this, in the oh, why is it not why is it not letting me do that? Hold on. Oh, it's because I have the uh I have the chat like like uh popped out. So I think I, I gotta put that back in here for the whisper to work. So let's try that again. It's weird. Oh, might be because I need to add you as a friend, possibly. Um, so that's super weird. Oh wait, I'll I'll just there we go. I wonder why the whisper wasn't working when I initiated it. That was very strange. Um, but yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I appreciate the uh, shout out. You know, um, ap appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, like that Twitter link there um, is a link to the tweet that I was showing, where I put like the clips of the show in there. Um, so I try to tweet a couple of those every week um, because I, uh, you know, I feel like our tabletop RPGs are still this like thing that if you're not playing it like you think is like this like impenetrable obtuse thing where you have to be able to calculate all this stuff on the fly and you have to have every single rule like memorized and i like to post clips to really show you that y'all these games are just a bunch of friends having fun doing silly stuff i mean there are some more serious campaigns out there every game is not like that but the games i'm in at least are usually a lot sillier, a lot more like low key and like relaxing. And it's just about getting out of the stress of the world and just having some fun with some characters, you know, where like you're set up to do something awesome. Right. Um, there are some other, other campaigns that are more like traditional, like three, like, uh, like a uh, AD and D or like a 3.5 where you're doing, more of the war gaming stuff, right? So like it's more of like you're like actively planning out combat and all that stuff. Um Kids on Bikes is is not like that. Not really a combat heavy system. There is a fight stat that you can assign a die to. Um so you can make a, a campaign where you are fighting, but it's not like a huge, huge like a focus into it. The like uh, other stats, which are like brains, brains, brawn, um, flight, right? Um, that's more of like what you're doing in like a kids on bikes, right? It's more about like navigating through the world where like combat is an option, but you're kids, right? So you can't really beat up a monster, you know? Um, so, so yeah, cool, cool beans. Yeah. 
so let's get back to let's get back to our our notes here. All right, so we kind of touched on that rumor a little bit. Um, I agree. It feels good to have that balance when you play a, a silly game versus serious. Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm not trying to shade people that have like more like serious games. It's really all about what the table kind of buys into. But I do think that the stereotype of these games is that they have to be serious and that you have to have a deep knowledge of the lore and that you have to like be able to calculate every spell damage and concentration time and all that. It's really not y'all. One of the best things about like modern games is that they're all, I think because, because D and D is focused so much on combat that like a lot of the, of the newer systems like kids on bikes take the opposite approach where they're a lot more focused on like, you know, on like conversation and deception and role play and, and like all that stuff. So. Last time I played a kid, I carried around hairspray and a lighter. Ooh. So like you were like, um, you were like, uh, I don't know if you saw the most recent, the uh, remake of the uh, It movie of uh, It. Um, in It chapter one, like a, one of the bullies had like a, uh, I think it was hairspray or like an aerosol can and like a, a lighter. And he was always like just lighting fires. And trying to scare people. Uh, and then he got uh, taken out by Pennywise. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> you, you you were the bad girl, though. Yeah, I did watch a little bit of Tales from the Loop. Um, I watched it. Who 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 was playing that game of uh, Tales from the Loop? I watched two campaigns of it. Um, and uh, it looks real fun. Oh, oh, your character was Bev. Oh, that's awesome. That is sweet. Yeah, yeah, I love the portrayal of Beverly in the um in the new in the reboot of uh, it. I think is her portrayal seems way better than in the um original in the miniseries. Um I've not read the book. Um but um but like I have seen, you know, the like 90s one and the one that came out a few years ago. Really really good stuff if you like horror stuff. Really good. Um, that's one of the reasons I fell in love with the EEG Star Wars or the dice rolls themselves or narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Um, um, FFG. Okay. EEG, FFG. Maybe GGG, HHG. You know? Every combination of letters. Um, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah. So, I really love all the all these, all the new systems because they all, like like focus on different things, right? So like you can choose like hey like hey like if I want a more combat heavy thing, I can go with with a, this system. If I want something that's more about like conversations and stuff like that, I can go with a, this one. And then there's a whole spectrum of, of things that like I blend those two. So it's really more about finding a system that works with what you like in games as opposed to being like pit, like a pigeonhole into all games have to be like this way. That's one thing that I really like about the modern um, RPG scene. Um, all right, so let's go through the rest of these rumors. So the Chadwicks and the T Bergens have uh, public beef. That's kind of been in the background. Um, we actually saw it more in ye old, like in a ye old Techburg when the T Bergens were currently the mayors and the Chadwicks were. Um, right, trying to take that away from them by like allying with the local mobsters, right? The gangsters, you know. So, um, so yeah. Um, if you want super crunchy and a difficult Blades of the Dark, want more narrative cipher system? Yeah, I've been really enjoying watching Into the Motherlands, um, which uh, you know. Tying into Pass, who I uh, play with um, on uh, Rivals of a Waterdeep, is the creative director of Into the Motherlands, which is a really awesome African themed, um, sorry, Afro futuristic, I should say, RPG um, that she does on like a, her channel um, on a twitch.tv slash Cypher of Tear um, on a Wednesday nights. And it's really fun, it's really cool. 
Um, and yes, absolutely, Thunder, you absolutely want people to agree with the expectations, right? Right? So that, like, everybody can, um, you know, everybody knows what they're getting into. You also want to make sure that you have some some lines and veils so that you know what content not to cover as a GM. Um, I talked about that um, with like, with like our uh, players, like before we started. So I definitely had a list of things that I knew that I couldn't cover. So I actually had some things that I originally wrote that I had to like actually remove because they kind of violated the lines and veils of uh, one or more of the players. Right. So like, you want to make sure that you don't put people in a situation where they might have some content that is triggering like for them or like reminds them of like a bad experience or that is just generally unsettling for them, you know? Um, so yeah. Um, oh yeah. But the digital custom dice spot needs to be saged. Nobody could roll well last episode besides the uh, DM. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've definitely had some weird rolling here on kids on bikes. Like we've had times where everyone's rolled bad at the same time. Everyone's rolled well at, at the same time. There hasn't really been a lot of like medium rolls. It's a lot of like really good or really bad rolls, you know, um, almost like they're like weighted dice or uh, something like that. But, you know, you know, it's all good. So like when I think crunchy, you think shadow run or the old role master system. Now that's really interesting. Cause I remember shadow run the video game. Right. But I never played the original source of the RPG in the same way that I've never played the cyberpunk RPG, but I did play the uh, recently like released like a video game, which unfortunately was a buggy mess that is still not back on the PlayStation store. Um, but I was lucky enough to play it on PC. Um, so I had, I had a lot of bugs, but I didn't have game breaking bugs. So I was able to finish it and complete it. Um, so sh sh shower run is just so many, so many D sixes. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of D sixes actually because every time I get some die, they they always have like multiple like D sixes. So I have, I got a lot of D sixes up, a lot of D sixes up there. Nora needs to have a hero's journey with roll twenty because four struggle with his rolls. Oh yeah, see like he was trying to sweet talk roll twenty. You cannot have the expectation that your sweet talk will always work. You know what I mean? It's not guaranteed to work. He's gonna learn. Uh, that last shadow run system felt like you need a theoretical math. Oh man, you guys are making me uh, feel like I need to check out what shadow run is. Because if y'all don't know, I'm a I'm an engineer by training. I run in math and physics, a tutoring service. Um, so hey, maybe I need to look into some shadow run and see uh, see what's going on with the math here. You know what I mean? That'll make me happy. Um, all right, so. Look at the rules for grenades and explosives. Oh, God. Um, all right, so let's finish up the rumors. So we had that the Doomsday Preppers are hunted or being hunted. So, yeah, so we definitely cover that because we mentioned that Mary is kind of terrorizing them out there. Um, homegrown trying to cancel. We did have this part, right? So we did have that, like, Julianne, well, the Julianne's, like, double, at least, um, wanted to cancel the turnip festival. Um, so we did cover that. Um, Alexa making up stories. We have mentioned once and the mayor is a dating. We also mentioned that once as well, since they were both freed. Um, and they kind of said that, you know, that they were starting out like investigating this uh, knowledge of the city, but they ended up together on the low. So, so we did cover all these rumors, which I feel pretty good about. So, all right. So I think the gathering, the party part, I feel pretty good about. Um, so we're going to get Felix and Coach D at the school. We're going to get, get, get like, I want to say Julianne, but it, it really is Julian because I'm looking at the, uh, the spelling that we got in the thing. So we're going to go pick up Julian and uh, go to the uh, old Shelby Tavern. Um, and we're going to go to the turnip garden to get Amelia. Um, and then Alexa and uh, Bitly are going to meet us there. 
Okay, I feel good about that. All right, so for the main event. So again, I think we got some some possible like locations here. So we got the Chadwick residence. We have the Forest. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think those two would probably be, might be the best, uh, well, no, I'll say, actually, yeah, why don't we say maybe the Pepperwood house? Because he, well, no, actually, no, because we said that Julian wants to be one with the people, so, like, she lives, you know, um, in the same house that she lived even before we became mayor, so she probably wouldn't have, like, enough space to like uh to like uh to like uh do that. Yes, yes, that is true. The uh, crunchiness is relative. Uh but there's more crunchiness in like battle lords. You know, I read that as battle toads. I was like, oh my god, is there a battle toads RPG? <laughs> Actually I'm wondering, is there like is there an RPG based on any of those like anthropomorphic fighters like battle toads or ninja turtles or um street sh sharks pizza cats all those things that uh shu like mentioned those in one of the episodes and i was i was dying um yeah yeah do they have any of those that would that would be cool all right so we got We got the Chadwicks. I'll also say the uh, T Bergens as well. And then the Forest. Oh man, see, 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 like y'all, y'all are making me want to look up this Battle Lords thing now. Um, how about this Battle Lords uh, rules. Oh, we got some free kickstart rules. You know what? I'm not going to look through this now because I know I don't think Roll20 wants me to be looking through other systems. But uh, I'm definitely going to bookmark this and uh, check it out on my account. I'm definitely going to check that out and uh, see what's up with that in my little tabletop folder, which I originally called a Dungeons and Dragons folder, but I probably need to change the name of it because I got too many other systems in there now. But yeah, I'll, I'll download the quick start of the rules. All right. Well, look, now, now it's open. Uh, Sa salty ginger please let me know if this is uh out of pocket that i'm reading this um well, well i guess it's a not being shared on the screen so like we're good uh yeah let's just get a sense of uh let's just get a sense of this actually so let me actually put it on here Let's well, that's weird. I thought I could um I thought Chrome could read uh PDFs, but I guess not. Yeah, I, I I guess not. Ah, there there we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's just uh. Let's just get a sense of. Oh oh yeah yeah I I guess that's fine. I just didn't know if there was like, 
rules about, you know, showing other stuff. All right. So, so this is a quick start guide, so it might not go as deep. Oh, look at that though. Look how cool that is. Look at these designs. That looks awesome. Oh, wow. Well, we're definitely combat, definitely a combat heavy, definitely a combat heavy, uh, thing. It looks like for sure. Uh, see oh this is like atlantis because there's like atlians it looks like okay all right let's go see if we can jump to some of the uh so the short version of the rules all right let's let's see here the 150 rule the percentiles okay so you roll a percentile for the success or the fail. Oh, that's interesting. So you don't use a D100. You actually use just like two, just like two uh, tens. Make sure that you decide which one the tens and which size the ones. Oh, a double Zod. That's a crit fail. The double Zod. I like that name. Oh, huh, zero one is an automatic like success. Oh, 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 yeah, because like, that would mean like a ten and a zero. So, yeah, and you, and you also need. Uh, oh, look at that rare occasion twenty side. So like this system actually doesn't use a d twenty a lot. That's interesting. Pretty interesting. Yo, I love these characters. Look at that. Look at Bucky O'Hare and uh, the Mars attacks, uh, like alien over here chilling. I love that. All right. Yep. So we got strength. We got uh, yeah. I I love this art. So we got strength, manual dexterity, agility. So manual. Dexterity is like for hand eye coordination, agility, con, aggression. Interesting. So, like, this is about the tendency to attack under provocation. So, if it's high, like, your character could go berserk. Oh my goodness. Suicidal rage. Oh my God. So, you can have a stat that just makes you, I guess that's the equivalent of like the barbarian rage. But it looks like a lot, um, I don't know, a lot more dangerous than that. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, thank thank you for lurking. Oh, snap, Dad. I appreciate it. Um, we know that people are working, so we appreciate all the lurks for sure. All my lurking heads out there. So in season two, the kids get turned into animals and use this. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, I, could, I, could, I could definitely turn Felix into uh, Bucky O'Hare right here. For sure. You know. Look how long the arms are. Those arms are like super long. Oh man. Uh all right. Yeah, well, I appreciate you uh com coming by. Thank you. Yeah, that aggression one, that sounds super strange. Cause that means if, if you roll if you roll on that and you get something high, like you could just completely black out. Right. Oh man. All right. So we have intelligence quotient. So we have a high Q. We have intuition and charisma. Oh man, there's a bunch of other stats too. Damage, initiative, size class, body points, depth store. Okay. Oh wow. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> and this is like the short version, right? Because cause this is like the uh, quick start guide. Like this isn't even like the core rule book. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, let's just... Oh, wow, this looks like Halo or something. This is like... Yeah, that looks just like Master Chief over there. These are Spartans. These are totally Spartans. 
wait, how old is this system? Did the system date before like 2000? Is it before Halo or is it after Halo? Because that looks like exactly like a Spartan. Like exactly. <laughs> All right, so we got a combat round. So we have, are we in range? Range brackets. So we got ranges for melee or range. So there is an initiative roll. So it's like a D and D. Um, and and you got actions, of course. I'm sorry, y'all. My eyes bother me. Ooh. light down I think that's bothered me a bit so okay all right so we are uh, spending half of your actions oh so like it's so like you can spend half and do like a bit of a flurry I guess so it's like kind of like a kind of like a flurry of blows from a monk in D D it looks like sort of wow this is a lot of stuff though yeah see this is something that would definitely benefit from roll 20 because roll 20 can like Calculate all this stuff in the background for you. You could do a chained combo if you spend them all. Holy crap. Hit location. You can choose where on the body you hit. Oh my god. This is like uh this is like the fallout, the uh I forgot the, the name of the mode where it like slows down time and you can choose like uh what 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 to target yeah vets yeah look at this if they have multiple arms you got to choose which arm by rolling d6s you got to apply all these mods based on if you're behind cover surprised oh my god this is this is a lot <laughs> this is a lot Defensive bumps. See, so, so you can bump. Wait, what is a bump? So when you have a weapon, you get okay. So you get bumps if you're like proficient. It looks like this is just a a, a funny sentence. When bumping an off body hit back onto the body, you can choose to bump the shot onto either leg. <laughs> oh man. I want a bump. Fred gets a single bump. He can move that strike into body section five, into body section six, or body section two. Oh my goodness. Crunch it up. Oh man, and, and like you 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 can like lose limbs. Jeez. All right, so we got the critical hit table. Wow. Yo, if you are if you are GM in this game, wow. You got to reference a lot of stuff during combat. Like, oh my goodness. Look at this. Each one of these you have stuff for the head and the torso. Okay, so this is where the uh, D20 actually comes into play if you're hit in different parts of the torso. And there's like paramedic, first aid. Yo, this is Y'all, this is the quick start guide. The free quick start guide. Okay, so you can do a defensive bump. Freeze, flex, or panic. Uh, okay, th this, th th this is the, uh, the aggression thing. Healing. Save the head order. If the soldier is so seriously injured that the body is destroyed or if the body cannot be recovered, medical personnel are to bring the head back and bring it to 
for body for body regrowth. That's right. <laughs> Given the proper medical facilities with a regen tank, a Zen can regrow a new body from the neck down. Wow. The hat box. Look at that. Yeah, and this suicidal thing is pretty interesting because, yeah, if you get that aggression check. Actually, I don't like using the word like suicidal. I'll just say just berserk. Um, so you get a bunch of more actions. You roll a D6. You just keep fighting. You can only attack. Uh, oh, wow. It says you will attack the nearest target, friend or foe. So you can actually like attack your party members if you're not careful. And you can't block, can't dodge, no bumps. That makes sense. All right. Yeah, we only halfway done with this quick start guide. <laughs> oh, my God. This is something. We got a bunch of armor, absorption. Yeah, so, like, all the armor has, uh, has like, that kind of... That's on it. The tab rule. Look at that mnemonic device. Threshold absorption body points. Actually, that's usually a mnemonic device. You just need those words. But threshold absorption and body are like such small parts of all these words. <laughs> so it's really a mnemonic device that needs a lot more words. <laughs> because that tab is insufficient. It is insufficient. <laughs> you know, like, like, uh, like my very educated mother just served us nine. I still say pizzas because sh shout out to Pluto. You're still a planet in my eyes. You know, like your devices should have like one letter per word in the acronym, right? Like, like it, sh it should be. T R S F D R D S F A R D S F B P. <laughs> That's what it should be. Um, all right, so we got lasers, omegas, disintegrators. Oh my god, your weapon can get jammed. Oh, that really sucks. That really sucks. Oh, <laughs> I am not endorsed by Coke, y'all. I just, I just didn't want to to make some coffee and like I got a bunch of of uh coke minis um so that I can I don't know I kind of given up like I know I can't give up soda like completely but I can at least get the minis to reduce my consumption a little bit so that sucks that your weapon can malfunction like oh man oh look look at that this is like a mech that looks pretty cool Ooh. This this kind of it looks like a mix between like an alien and like a warlock in Destiny. <laughs> like a little Nova bomb, a little Nova bomb there. Um Matrices? Are we about to are we about to like find some determinants? Use Kramer's rule? Or we 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 about to use a matrix to solve a system of five equations. Uh, let's see. Energy brackets, power points. Oh, man. Let's just move past that. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay, so, like, now they give you a scenario here that you can run. So, yeah, I don't want to get into the actual, like, scenario, but... Yeah, so look at how they describe these like characters. So they have all these stats here and these observation checks. Wow. Oh my god. So like this is like how you can hit everybody in the head, chest, and 
wow, pretty interesting, you know? Um, not going to front. Um, looks a little intimidating to me. But uh, is Larry Sims still involved? Uh, I don't know. L- let me go to the beginning and see if they have, like, the the names of... Well, it says it was created by him. And this is 7th edition, it looks like. And... Let's see, I don't think I see his name anywhere else. but So he might not have been involved with this edition. But... He's definitely the creator. And it says, hey, look at that. We don't support cannibalism, racism, sexism, or any other ism. Pretty good. That's actually pretty good. I like when they put those explicit statements in there because we know how some games have had issues with those uh, isms. Like a Kids on Bikes has a similar thing in the rule book as well. And I actually want to show y'all that because I was really impressed when I read this part of the kids on bikes book. Um, yeah. Where they basically, they talk about, um, where they, well, I, I, I gotta find it first. Uh, but, uh, let's see. Yeah, so, like, they have, like, this part on, like, properly including, like, disabled and, like, uh, and neuroatypical characters. And they basically say, you know, like, don't include, like, uh, tropes that are bad, you know. But they explicitly say it, you know what I'm saying? They don't, they they don't, like, dance around it, you know, which, which, like, I, like, really love. And they talk about things that are on a uh, spectrum and not a binary. They like mention how make sure this is not for jokes and the GM should not exclude characters from events. So I really love how they really go into like, don't abuse our system just to make jokes about like blind people or autistic people or that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I think it's really, really awesome. And it, and, and like uh and like they, they they do the same thing with race gender and like uh and like and like and, and like a sexuality and they also most importantly and I need y'all to understand this especially um people that are not uh not PLC all right is this part historical accuracy is not an excuse to be horrible you know what I'm saying don't set your game in the you know in the sixties and use that as an excuse to be racist or sexist, you know? Um, so yeah, I love, love, love that. Right. So like, so like they, they make it clear that you are creating this world. So it's up to you to determine what is, what is, uh, what, what, um, what, uh, is, uh, is like a true. And it says, as long as your group agrees on the ways these elements will be addressed and everyone is comfortable with these decisions and as long as you are addressing these issues seriously and compassionately, you'll be playing within the spirit of the game. So more systems need to do this, right? They need to be really, really explicit about this, not just saying like, you know, we're all about fun or like whatever. You have to address this because um, so many people think that the reason that they don't see a lot of diversity in games is because people you know, don't like the games when really a lot of it is because they feel ostracized from the games, right? Because if games don't explicitly say that, there are some games out there that do have these isms in it, you know? And they do, like, treat women differently and queer people differently and trans folk kind of differently. And that, obviously, that intersects with race and class and all that kind of stuff. So, so um, yeah, all games... They need to have these really specific things in here. All right. So, yeah, I love that part of the uh, kids on bikes thing. I I remember I read that and, like, I was like, I got to play this system because they are clearly, like, making a stance that people like me are welcome, you know, for sure. So, um, yeah, it could definitely be a, uh, 
elephant in the room for sure. Um, all right, cool. So uh, that was a nice little uh, side adventure into Battle Lords. You know, I um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious. You know, I might watch a. Um, if you have a suggestion for any existing campaigns, either on YouTube or like an audio podcast or uh, something, I'd be interested to maybe watch some of it and just see kind of how it is. It might be that the rule book is more intimidating than the game actually is. Um, so, so yeah, I'd be interested to see somebody play it because the art looks super cool. And, um, yeah. Yes, exactly. All about fun is fine as long as it is not at the expense of someone else's dignity. Yeah, you would think that most people, like, know that, but, um, you know, uh, they don't. Is the B-Dave one on uh, Q-Times? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've watched a lot of B-Dave stuff, so, yeah, I'll... I'll uh, I'll uh, check uh, check that one out. And yeah, he's also a writer on that Into the Motherlands um, show that that like I uh, mentioned uh, earlier. And he is the DM of Black Dice Society, which is a new show that um, is set in Ravenloft that they uh, just started up as well um, on uh, the DND uh, on the YouTube on their YouTube channel. So. All right, so let's talk about the main event. So we got our possible like locations. We got either the Chadwick residence. We got the T. Bergen residence. And we got the forest. So we've already kind of talked a little bit about the forest. Because if I go back to that forest map. So we basically have that there's going to be like you know, a guarded tower. There's going to be like essentially like a uh, so like uh, room with bows and arrows for targeting competition. I was going to do like a hunting thing, but I don't want to. I don't want to have these kids like hunting animals or whatever. Um, so I'm really going to have it where like there's kind of like a target thing where like they have to, you know, like a friendly kind of competition where they are like um, hit hitting targets and like all that. Yes, B. Dave is an awesome guy. Definite in, inspiration. I remember I first met him um, when I went to D&D Live in 2018. Um, Dream of Many Eyes, which is where my D&D group, where the rivals of Waterdeep, had our first game and I was like, who is this guy? He was in full cosplay. If, if you've never met him, he's pretty tall and he was super charismatic and just super awesome. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I, uh, he is a very, very cool dude. And, and like his shows are quality. His shows are absolutely qual absolute quality. So, um, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, I don't know how tall he is, but he's definitely over six feet, for sure. Like, he's probably, like, maybe 6'2", or something like that, 6'3". Because he seems like he's about as tall as my dad, and my dad's, like, around 6'3". Is he 6'9"? No way. He's not, like, an NBA forward. 6'5"? Man, I don't remember him being that tall. But maybe, maybe he is. So you're six four and you looked up to him. Oh my god. Well, I'm sorry, yo. I am, I am a uh, five nine. So he's a full foot taller than me. <laughs> he's a full foot taller than me. Oh goodness. Wow, I didn't realize he was like a. He's like a forward. He's like an NBA forward. Holy crap. Man. Yeah, and like I've met him in person, I guess. I guess I've never been like shoulder to shoulder with him. So like we didn't have like a, a measuring competition, you know, like a measuring competition, but oh my God. See y'all, I'm mixing the Coke up with, with some water as well. You know? Ooh, Erica, Erica rocks. Um, so for so for my other game for Rivals of Waterdeep, um, Erica 
Ishii is actually my character's patron, <laughs> which is pretty cool, right? So my character, Shaka, in Rivals of Waterdeep, um, he switched patrons um, in uh, uh, Season 3 of uh, Rivals of Waterdeep. And uh, we had Erica on as like a guest. And, you know, she uh, was an angel, basically. And she made me a celestial, a celestial warlock. And again, I know this is the Roll20 stream, but I'm, I'm still talking about rivals. And y'all, my character is in a video game, which is very cool. So um, I was streaming that last night till about one in the morning. So I went a little bit later because I know that I had this, but man, it's, it's just fun. It's fun. Oh, she is the covered art for um, Alt, 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 Alter Carbon. Oh, so if you've not been watching, so Marquia, who is one of our castmates here, um, has been doing a Altered Carbon, um, a Altered Carbon RPG series. Let's just go to because she's been like posting about it. And let's see. Yeah, here. Yeah. So like uh, she's been doing like she's been the uh, game master for uh, this. And like and like, they've been doing like this dual story as well. Um, so, yeah, let me actually. Uh. I'll, I'll whisper this to you as well. Uh, salty ginger. Uh, just so you can put that in the chat so that people can check that out if they like. Because um, yeah, it's it's really good. She's a she's a great GM. She's a great GM for sure. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, yes. So, so like, uh, we're gonna have like a kind of targeting thing. You, you know, like it'll it'll be kind of fun um, to like see like how like you know it it might be like the kids versus the adults or like the you, you know or or uh, battle of the sexes or something like that. You know, to um, you know, I I just want them to 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 like do like uh, so something fun. You know, um, did you totally derail? Uh, you know, uh, it's not a bad derail because part of this GM prep stream is, you know, you want to incorporate all these different kinds of things in your GMing, right? So like you want to make sure that you, that, that your mind is like open to a bunch of different influ influences. So I think that this is actually good. I mean, these streams are here to talk, to um, chill, and do some notes and maps and all that stuff. So, um, you know, um, yeah, you do never know what you can steal from my different systems. I've definitely put some D and D stuff in this kids on bikes game. And I've definitely, I put some of things from, uh, savage worlds as well. Um, and from a uh, dungeon world, you know, so like those are all systems that I've played in uh, previously, you know, so I've, um, you know, I like to, kind of combine all that information in there absolutely as like a comic book artist you absolutely know right you, you don't as any kind of like creative person you don't want to say i only do this i only talk to these people i only read this content you want to be broad so like if you're like making a video game and you're making like a fighting game you don't only want to look at fighting games right you want to look at rpgs you, you want to look at puzzle games you want to look at um, at visual novels because they all have different strengths and weaknesses and how they convey things and, you, and like you want to be able to if there's something that resonates like with you as a creator you want to incorporate that no matter where it's from you know now obviously you want to change it so that it fits kind of what you're doing like i'm not saying wholesale lift without changing anything right but like you want to be inspired by a whole bunch of of like uh of like uh, different things right if that game came out in the 90s the kids could play the ttrpg inside of a ttrpg yeah we could have you know we we could have where they find like a a jumanji rpg you know 
So we're playing an RPG of the players playing an RPG of their characters in an RPG. You know, it, it could get deep. You know what I mean? We could get real deep. Get real deep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love Burn Bright. Like, I've definitely been, like, watching those as as well. Another cool system that's, like, uh, in, like, uh, Roll20, so... Yeah, the blades clock system. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, I really like um, like D&D's concept of advantage and disadvantage that they put in a 5e. So I do tend to use that um, in like a lot of my games. Um, um, you know, and like uh, things like uh, inspiration and that kind of stuff, I think is is uh, is like a pretty good. So. All right. Yeah, so we got the guarded tower and we have the uh, we'll just say bows and arrows so we have rooms so like one room has the bows and arrows and the other room has, has like sleeping arrangements All right. cool and then we also had we like had a uh, these characters here who I didn't really name or I, I just wanted to have them there and maybe develop them. But like we basically had a kid in the back as well. So we had a kid that knows more than he should. All right. So let's actually just call this whole thing the forest tower and move everything here. There we go. All right. So because we've been to the Chadwick's residence, so we know that um, Andy, Forrest's favorite butler, right? we're going to say that he basically runs the place. You know, so like he's going to be the one, if we do choose to like go there, he's, he's, he's going to be the one that we interact with and stuff. And I think it'll be interesting if uh Ch if chadwick the third is the one that invites everyone over right because he doesn't have the best uh relationship with folks right uh no we have not met the mother we have not we have not um yeah should i introduce a new you know it actually might be a good idea because I was thinking about if I should introduce any new characters really um, here. Um, uh, but, you know, yeah, maybe maybe if they go there, they're, they're going to meet. Uh, so third and wife. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, maybe, maybe we'll introduce. Yeah, in general, for each person, we've only met one parent, right? Because I already had to think of a personality for that one parent, so I didn't want to think about like a multiple one. So for Meadow, we know her uh, mom. For uh, Winter, we know her dad and her stepmom, right? For uh, for uh, Mana. We we uh, know know her mother, <coughs> so so uh, yeah, I was uh, trying not to do too many different personalities. So I could get them like confused, you know. As a GM, you definitely want to know your limits in terms of how many NPCs you could believably play. Don't overdo yourself, you know. Don't try to say I'm going to memorize fifty different people, you know, and uh, make them like believable. It's way too easy to get people like confused. All right. Yeah. But what I'll, I'll still say that like him and like his wife, 50 light weight. <laughs> well, look, I said, know your limits, right? Know your limits. You know, I have another limit in terms of, I'm not really good at voices. 
right? So I do some voices, but I'm not like great at it, you know? Like, man, like Marquia is great at it, you know? Um, and like, I've seen other people that are amazing at it. It's just not where my skill set is, you know? So, so I try not to do too many different voices. Um, because even if I do one that I'm good at, I'll sometimes forget. And then the next person I'll talk, I won't use a voice or a different voice, you know? So it's like not only knowing how to do it, but that consistency of remembering it every time that that person is, is a there, especially if you're in a conversation with more than one person, like it, it is, uh, it's something, you know what I'm saying? So if you're good at it, more power to you. If you're not, though, don't let it stop you from being a, uh, you know, a, a, a GM because you don't need any voices, you know, as long as you always convey to your to, to your party who they're talking to, you know. Um, so, yeah, you had to come out with a personality for an old sailor with all the teeth on one side of his mouth. Oh, my God. Um, I mean, there are classes on voices for sure. Um you know, but I think that like the, the, the those are mostly if you go to like an acting school or something like that, um, you can take those, uh, those, those like, uh, those like a voice. Yeah, it does add that immersion for sure. But also, you know, it's just, but like, you don't need it, you know, like everybody's not good at everything, you know? Um, so, you know, you, you just, I mean, I know for me, even if I did learn them, it would like frustrate me to go through that process. Right. So, and the game is about having fun. So I'm like, Hey, if having fun is me just being myself and just doing voices, because I can still convey the personality without doing a voice, you know? And that's actually more of a challenge is to convey what kind of personality a person has without relying on the voice, you know? So I actually see that as like a challenge and like, it makes you think about other ways that I can convey what this person looks like and like what their intuitions are right without, without the uh, voice. So I just think about other uh, things. Um, I just talk to myself all the time. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, that's funny. All right. So we have, they're, they're like the Chadwicks in, invite every, everyone over. But, um, oh, hey, I actually didn't see you, Nor. Well, welcome to the uh, prep stream. I don't know if you've been here for a while and I just missed you, but uh, welcome. Four is in the house. Um, yeah, so if we do this uh, at the Chadwicks, uh, then we'll say that Child the third and his wife invited everybody over. But like, I want to say that be, be, being Chadwick, the uh, third Andy is going to actually host the event and do everything, you know, because, because w w when you're rich, you know, uh, you like, you like, announce things and then really it's your help that does all the work. Right. So, you know, um, so yeah. And if, if we do it at the, at, at the T Bergens, I'm going to say, Hmm. So the T Bergen one is tough because we haven't really talked about the leadership of the T Bergens. Like we talked about T Bergens in the town Right, so like, so like that means I would have to introduce a character that is like the head T Bergen. So like I'd have to make one up basically. Um, so hmm, yeah, yeah, some yeah, somebody give me a name because I think I want to make this a woman. Um, so yeah, give me the name of a of a like, like a good name. That would go with T Bergen. Uh, that person would be Leanne. Okay, I can dig that. Leanne T Bergen. Yeah, let's let's just write these out. Shelly T Bergen. Scarlet T Bergen. Oh, these are all good. 
Hmm. Maybe I can find a way to use all three of them. No, I think Shelly, I think it goes with T. Bergen. Shelly T. Bergen. Uh, Leanne sounds, Leanne might be it though. That one sounds really, I don't know. It sounds really strong, really strong. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm gonna roll with, um, I think we'll roll with Leanne. But Shelly and Scarlet, I will bring in somehow. So, like, Leanne is the one that invites everyone over. And I'll say that uh, Shelly and Scarlet are her mischievous daughters. How about that? Mischievous daughters. And... Oh, six dollars plus tax? You take PayPal? Well, the PayPal fee is gonna is gonna wipe out that six six dollars. You might get you might get a couple of cents. You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah. Okay. All right, so so I'm digging this. So as I said before, the first episode is is gathering all the people. The second one is is like gonna be what whatever the characters choose as what the main event is. So either the Chadwicks or the T Bergens or um you know, I won't say Forest Tower. I'll just say just to keep things uh clear, I'll say like Meadows former compound. How about that? And it, and, and then there's gonna be like this like forbidden tower she's not familiar with and then that's gonna have all this stuff in it. okay cool all right i think that's awesome yeah i think that's enough to go off of i'm definitely gonna build on it some more right as we uh as we get closer and also i just want to look at these unused assets and see if there's any that i could possibly use so as you see i didn't use any of these animated uh tentacles well i did use this this mass of a tentacles here i did use this but if you saw last episode there was a mass of tentacles that was expanding and then four put a bear hug <laughs> and prevented it from expanding so i actually had to make it go back down like my intention was to have that cover the whole map and then like you were gonna have to like figure out how, how to get out of the room because because like it was gonna be like blocking all the doors and stuff but you know, for it, he rolled so well that he, uh, you know, kept it all in there. So, 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 um, yeah, that, that was pretty awesome. So I'm just responding to a text from my wife. Uh, is the Microsoft Word notes also how you structure your s session breakdown? Um, sometimes. Um, honestly, my sessions, I have a lot of bullet points, right? So I have like my general points of what I want to achieve. I don't try to plan the sessions out too heavy though, because the players are going to do what they do. Right. So I, I keep a lot of it in my head. Like I do have a, um, like kind of a, well, I'll, I'll give an example of one thing that, that like I use to kind of keep an idea of things. So I do have what I call the lesson plan here. And I do do things that are kind of like this, these like timelines, right? Where I kind of map out the general timeline. And like, I just use a Google slide just cause I'm familiar with the, like how to make a timeline from when I worked in corporate America and had to make these things all the time right so i basically have i have like this where it's like a, a a timeline and then i have like all the major points so i use this as like my overall guide right of like what's going on and then i have other characters that like hint at this stuff or like little bits of this right might be um they might come up 
or they might not. Right. Um, so like, so like, so it's so like, yeah, I like instead of writing like three pages for episode 10, right. I have this in the background and then I have like a bullet points of what I want them to like a do. And then, you know, I have all the maps built. Right. So, <coughs> so f for the last session, I knew that we were going into the factory and I won't talk about exactly what happened in the factory, just in case you have not seen it, but I know that I had this map b b built out as like part of the factory. And then I had this map that was built out as well. All right. So you really want to make sure that you're not driving people toward um, things too aggressively, which is what I felt like I was doing before when I would map out my entire thing. I was like, just trying to drive people to it and it felt like unnatural to them, you know? Um, so, so like, yeah. And, and like, also I use Google docs instead of Microsoft word just so I can have it in the cloud. I know Microsoft has office 365 and that kind of stuff, but I've tried that and it just doesn't work as seamless as, as Google docs. So um, I would suggest always using cloud based stuff for taking notes. Um, you, you, you can always save down a hard copy if you want, but like all the Google docs have like offline mode. So even if you're not online, like you could save it on your phone or your tablet or your computer and that kind of stuff. So, so, I'll suggest that. All right, y'all. Um, we're about at the end of our session here. Um, so just wanted to remind you to hit up all these links at the bottom, y'all. If you go to YouTube and you go to the Roll20 page here, then you'll be able to see all the different shows, right? So like, so we have this like play test of like uh, Coyote and the uh, Crow. All these awesome games. Gabe uh, James does his table talk, which I got was on a couple weeks ago. Um, and if you go to the playlists, then you'll see all the different playlists here. And if you scroll around, oh my God, look, look at Carlos. Look at Carlos's face right there. <laughs> um, then we can go to our kids on bikes right here. And we have all our episodes and all the GM preps here as well. So uh, make sure that 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 you ch check check that out. Yes. So a salty ginger show is right here. Burn bright. So if you want to check that out as well, you know, there's just a whole bunch of of like a of like a great show. Oh yeah, and Masood show right. So like Masood Hawk is our DM right for Rivals of Waterdeep over on like uh our our uh twitch uh, channel so like a masood and shu mason who is a uh, winter on like uh, on, like uh kids on bikes is also in monster of the week so um yeah whole bunch of cool stuff on like uh, roll 20 and one thing that i love is that roll 20 is really embraced having a diverse set of creators and of like uh, players so like for a lot of the games here you'll see like different races, different sexualities, a whole bunch of different like identities. So it truly represents like the diversity of gaming. Right. So I really, really love that. Um, so yeah, make sure to check us all out on like uh, YouTube, on Twitter, on like Instagram, right. All those links there on the bottom and on Facebook. So uh, check us out for kids on bikes. Um, we will be here. Um, Monday at 10 a.m. Central. Um, so until then, have a great uh, rest of your day. And peace out, everybody.